Israel is being put a little bit on defense in terms of the whole PR machine because MSNBC is just going to want to nail them over and over and over again for saying how inhumane they are. Basically, I guess, to try and prove that Rashida Tlaib is right. I want to share some sound with you. There was a, a congressman, a Republican congressman, that went on MSNBC and basically had to school the host there who was trying to suggest that, you know, well, you know, in her own little, little way, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's, it, it's really the Palestinians that we should be thinking about. So here is uh, Congressman Kirby out of Georgia talking on MSNBC, trying to talk some sense into these people. Good luck. Congressman, there's a lot of misinformation on, and going around as well, but uh, Secretary Blinken described horrendous uh, photos and videos that were shown to him by the prime minister in his office today um, of babies with, riddled with bullet holes and, you know, people burned, a soldier beheaded. Um, I know the IDF and others in the Israeli government have talked about beheaded infants. We haven't seen evidence of that, but that has been what they have said. I know the president repeated that, just saying that we're, we're trying to confirm as well as we can in the fog of war what really happened. It's horrendous enough as it is. I don't want to quarrel with that. And I know that there's a lot of information not getting to the people in Gaza because uh, they've been under Hamas rule now for some 30 years. So that is clearly true. But just to point out that the U.S. is at least urging Israel to try to minimize the civilian casualties, which are causing, uh, you know, criticism from the secretary general of the U.N. There's going to be pressure around the world because this ground invasion, as you know, is going to be is going to have horrendous look, impacts. Look, a Andrea, of course, any time uh, we are in a situation where there is a war, uh, or a military response, okay, this is, this of is course, Michael everybody Long. wants to minimize uh, civilian Long. casualties. You would hope there are none. Uh, but the realities of war, obviously, are uh, that it's inevitable, unfortunately. Uh, and so you certainly try to minimize that. But I think, uh, and to be clear, um, regardless of whether or not uh, you want to say uh, there's no evidence of beheadings, you're talking about innocent babies, innocent children being slaughtered for one purpose, because they're Jewish. Uh, this is the worst massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust. And I think we need to be very clear about this, uh, why this is happening uh, and uh, what the res response should be. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. You know, he, he's and absolutely not... right, and, and you know she tries to kind of back off it, but it's the same kind of thing that happened the other day. We had Jonathan Greenblatt, who's the president of ADL, the American Defamation League, go on MSNBC and look straight in the camera and say, wow, like, I love your network, he said. He loves our network. I love this show. I cannot believe what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing in terms of how the copy was written and what the anchor was saying is they were introducing him. In other words, none of these people actually want to call Hamas a terror group. Look at the New York Times. They're, they're calling them gunmen, right? Oh, well, actually, that's how it, it came out after the fact. Because in the beginning, the New York Times referred to Hamas as terrorists. But then somebody must have gotten to them. And then they changed it to gunmen. I mean, this is pretty, pretty awful. And again, I want to... I want to show you Jonathan Greenblatt because he had to say it. He had to say it right to these MSNBC. So while I am sad faces. and cope, trying to cope, I'll be honest, I am angry. I am angry with the world that allowed the dehumanization of Israelis and sanitized the terrorism of Hamas. I must say, I love this show and I love this network. But I've got to ask who is writing the scripts? Hamas? The people who did this, they are not fighters, Jonathan. They are not militants. And I'm looking right at the camera. They are terrorists. It is a barbarian who rapes and brutalizes women, who tear, kills children in front of their parents, and then brings them over to Gaza, 
who literally, we've heard all these reports, and we know these aren't just reports. These were filmed gleefully by the barbarians who committed these grotesque crimes. They filmed, for example, an elderly woman in her home in one of these towns. They burned her alive in her house because she was too infirm to take out. And, you know, parading women, bleeding from the crotch because they were raped throughout Gaza while people hoot and holler and cheer. So look, you know, when we say, oh, this was an escalation, it was bound to happen, I am sorry. This was a massacre that was pre-planned. This was not destined to happen. It is not he normal. is so right. He's so right. And this is what we need to remember, because as I said, it's going to get more challenging for Israel right now. Because Israel's on offense. You, you don't mess with Israel. I, I mean, they, they got caught off guard on this one. Total failure of intelligence, both on their side and, and on our side, too. And we're going to ask a lot of questions about that, and we will, believe me. But you know what? They've got to do what they've got to do right now. And that means they got to root out Hamas. they got to get rid of Hamas. And yet, there are people that don't even want them to do that. Again, on MSNBC. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable. Let me share with you this woman who is an American Palestine advocate who seems to think that Hamas is just another political party. Forget about what they're doing to women, children, elderly people, and everyone else. Forget about that. No, no, they're a political party that you're supposed to deal with. This is pathetic, but watch it. You need, you need to know where they're going to take this. And you need to know when those Harvard kids keep saying, oh, we got to support Palestine. And Rashida Tlaib keeps hanging her flag out there and tells you this is where we need to be. It is not. About Hamas. Do you, do, is Hamas a, a government that is functional and should, should remain in Gaza? Do you think that there's a coexistence between the Israelis and clear. the Palestinians want- with Hamas? I absolutely believe in coexistence. There is only one future. We either all survive together in mutual uh, existence or we all die together in this mutual destruction. There is no way forward. We have all got to exist together. What is the U.S. and Israeli plan right now? What do they plan on doing? Invading all of Gaza? and decimating it how do you get rid of a of a fight for freedom this is a freedom struggle it's not just encapsulated in one political party like hamas it is encapsulated across the palestinian diaspora across all palestinian political parties you cannot extinguish a struggle for freedom the demand is an end of the occupation for 56 years now a demand of lifting of the siege 16 years now and a demand of the end of 75 years of settler colonial removal and replacement. There is a political solution. Human rights organizations have mapped out a human rights path, which includes sanctions on Israel because of its apartheid policies, weapons sanctions that they cannot be using indiscriminately against Palestinians. There is a political pathway forward. We have been urging all to follow it. We have to allow for spaces of hope with dignity for all people. This cannot be ended militarily. There are many people um, in Israel, there are many people uh, in in the Palestinian territories, West Bank and Gaza, who are are all for that, who want that. Um, And we've talked about the the current Israeli makeup of the government and the inability uh, of forging a path forward with Palestinians. We've done extensive reporting on that uh, on this show for the past week. but I have to ask you again, Wonderful. What, Thank about, you. what about Hamas? What do you do with Hamas? Hamas was established in 1987 in the midst of the first of what's known as the first Palestinian Intifada. They were established as an opposition to the Palestinian uh, to Fatah and wanted to wage a liberation struggle from the moment that the Oslo peace process was established. Israel began to besiege the Palestinians in Gaza by creating a perimeter around them. Hamas is a political party. We see them making political decisions as well. They've been portrayed as fanatical terrorists who are out there for primordial lust and and violence and hate. And yet 
Hamas is a political party that has switched its allegiances. We saw them become a governing party and not just a resistance movement following the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. We saw them leaving Syria and moving to Qatar in the midst of the Syrian uprising. They are eligible to be part of a Palestinian unity government, which the Israel and, and the United States have thwarted. Okay, we I, have I'm sorry, to I gotta just cut her off. I'm sorry, lady. You know what? Hamas is murdering children, raping women, killing elderly, burning people alive, dragging them through the streets. No, no, no. Hamas has lost all chance. Finito, as they'd say in Italian, okay? All chance at anything. It's over. Game over. Game over. Hamas will never ever have an opportunity at anything. You know why? They are a terror organization. We've always known they were a terror organization, but now we know they're a terror organization akin to the likes of ISIS. And Iran prompted this. Hey everyone, Trish Regan here. If you enjoyed that clip, please do me the favor of subscribing to the channel. Just hit that little subscribe button right over there. Did I do that right? Uh, Not quite, but you know where it is. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that you get the alerts, and I'll see you back on the show.